and welcome to the Habits and Home Show. I'm your host, Lisa Lazat, and I help busy moms bring order to their homes by downsizing and decluttering and ditching old habits in exchange for systems that bring peace and more enjoyment to their lives. If you're a mom trying to show the love of Jesus to your family, but the clutter in your home keeps you overwhelmed and frustrated, you have come to the right place. On this podcast, you will hear easy step-by-step tips to declutter and create systems so you can keep your home organized and finally walk in the peace God has promised you. Need some accountability? I've got you covered there too. Join the Accountability Club, a community of like-minded mamas decluttering and systemizing our homes together. Are you ready, friend? Let's get started. Hey friends, and welcome to the show. Before we dive into today's topic, I want to let you know that you have one more month to dive into the Accountability Club before we take a break for summer. So in the month of May, we are decluttering and systemizing the bathroom. I'm also going to throw in a bonus zone cleaning system for you. So what the accountability club looks like is we have two group coaching calls. And I understand if you are not a fan of groups, I get it. That's why I have one-on-one coaching available as well. But inside the accountability club, it's really affordable for those who can't do one-on-one coaching with me. And so what you get is two group coaching calls where I actually have you start decluttering right there on the call with me. I'm decluttering in my house, you're decluttering in your house, and it really helps you to get over that task initiation, especially for you mamas who have ADD and your executive functions are struggling. Okay. So you get two group coaching calls with me plus training videos on the specific topic that we're covering, which is your bathroom. We're going to declutter it, organize it and systemize it next month. So don't wait, take advantage of that now before we take a break for summer. Okay. So for today's topic, we are talking about the subject of a spending freeze. You may have heard this before, but if not, let me just explain. A spending freeze is basically when you take a break from spending money on a selected item or a selected group of items. (laughs) So in my case, we are on a couple of spending freezes and let me explain what those are. They all came about for various different reasons. So the first spending freeze that we're doing right now is a freezer spending freeze. And why I chose to do that is because we have a need in our kitchen right now, and it is our freezer. It is acting up. It's not working right. And so I really need to take the time to thaw out the freezer to defrost it. And to be able to do that, we need to use up the items that are in our freezer. So right now I'm on a spending freeze from buying anything that needs to be stored in the freezer and making myself use up those items in the freezer. Okay. So another spending freeze that we're doing is we are on a spending freeze from going out to eat on the weekends when we are traveling for tournaments or um, games, soccer games for my kids. And why we have been doing that is because we got in kind of like a bad habit of not preparing food ahead of time in our cooler. And we end up spending a lot of money on the weekends. And so we are kind of on a I would say a very grace filled (laughs) spending freeze in that area. And so what I'll do instead of eating every meal out, I will plan for one meal, typically our dinner and get, go through the drive through and grab that. But I, I try to plan ahead of time snacks instead of going to the concession stands. And so I'm on a spending freeze for eating out you know, while we're doing our ball games on the weekend. Okay. And so that's just a matter of getting us into better spending habits and using up food in our home, which is a lot cheaper than going out to eat and going to the concession stand. Another spending freeze that we're doing right now. And like I said, this is all kind of happening naturally because we need to get some of our finances in check. 
And so my son and I have had a couple of dental expenses come up, major dental expenses. So we're kind of on a spending freeze of mainly doing anything luxurious. So anything that is more of a luxury or an an unnecessary expense, I am holding back and I'm not spending money on those things. And I am snowballing our debt in our credit card. So it kind of gave me the idea of covering this topic with you to give you a couple of ideas for doing a spending freeze, why you might want to do them and what you're going to gain from doing a spending freeze. When is a good time to do a spending freeze? Well, if you feel like you want to use up some things that you have in your home, so some things that you might do along those lines is your pantry. If you have been collecting a lot of items in your pantry or in your refrigerator and they either go out of date or they just get pushed to the back of the the shelves and you end up not using it, it might be good to go on a pantry spending freeze so that it makes you use up the items that you have in your pantry. Another time you might want to go on a spending freeze is when you need to reset spending habits. Like I said, we've been, you know, on our, on our tournament weekends, we just don't even prepare ahead of time. And so that's really not good habits or good spending habits for us. So we are focusing on that and getting better in that area. Another reason why you might want to do a spending freeze is to build your savings. So something that I was actually saving for recently was my husband is about to turn 40 and he has always wanted to travel to Alaska. And I was saving up money and just kind of like, you know, hiding money in my my drawer beside my bed and just kind of, you know, instead of just spending everything, you know, that was in my, uh, my basically my mom allowance, which covers our groceries and gas and things like that. If I had any you know, extra bills left over, I would just stuff it in there. So, you know, I kind of went on a spending freeze of just spending those extra dollars that I had. Well, of course, our dental emergencies came up and all of the saved money, all of the money that I had saved up for that wonderful trip that I was going to surprise him with, with is now going to pay off those dental, those dental expenses. And We talked about it. I did end up sharing that with my husband, the thing that I wanted to do with him. And he was like, Lisa, we can always do that, but we need to do the right thing right now. And we need to do the responsible thing and we can save, you know, that money back up and go on that trip later on. So sometimes you just have to parent yourself and do the right thing with your money right then. Okay. Um, Dave Ramsey got a hold of us a long time ago when he said, Live like no one else now so that you can live like no one else later, okay? Live like no one else so that you can live like no one else. And so we try to make good financial decisions. So uh, another time that you might want to do a a spending freeze is when you are trying to pay down debt, like we are doing right now with our dental expenses. So what are some of the types of spending freezes? So I mentioned a couple already, a freezer spending freeze. If you need to, if you haven't decluttered your freezer in a long time, or there might be some built up ice in there, it might be good to defrost it and go on a spending freeze in your freezer so that you can be able to defrost it without anything in there. Like I said earlier, a pantry spending freeze. So not buying anything in your pantry and forcing yourself to use up those items clothes. That's a great idea for doing a spending freeze. Maybe there's a bunch of clothes in your closet that you keep pushing to the side and you keep overlooking or you keep, you know, saying you're going to wear it one day and you never do. Well, if you go on a spending freeze, you're setting that intention that you're actually going to use and wear the clothes that you have in your closet. Another spending freeze that we're going to do this summer is we're not going to let our kids um, participate in summer sports. We have been been involved in sports all year long, and we've made a decision since our kids are going to school this year. We really want to 
spend time with them. We don't want them to be involved in um, organized sports. And so we are going on a summer spending freeze for their sports. Another thing that you might want to put a freeze on is going out to get coffee or going out to eat. That can become very, very expensive. So you can get really creative in your ideas of how you can go on a spending freeze. This is something that I I challenge my clients, my one-on-one -on -one clients that I coach online as we're decluttering and systemizing their house. I really challenge them, especially if they have had the habit of overspending, which leads to over collecting. I challenge them to go on some sort of spending freeze. Now I don't make them, but I do challenge them and how I hold them accountable is of course, I'm conversing with them through, uh, through text for their accountability after their coaching call. And, um, some, some of my clients that I'm working with right now, they're sending me pictures of their receipts and I'm not scrutinizing what they're buying. There's lots of grace with this, but just the matter of knowing that you have to show your receipt to somebody else is going to make you more mindful about what you're spending. And something else that I encourage them to do is before they go into a store, I have them sit in their car and sit in their car, plant their feet in their car. And before they even get out of the car, set their intentions, just talking to God, You've given me everything I need. I am whole. I am complete. And you're going to provide for me what I need during the time that I need it. And so set your intentions of what you're going into the store to buy and train yourself and really practice walking out of the store with just those items. Just last week, I had to walk into a, a, a general store to get a big fat um, Sharpie marker to use on a poster. And in this Dollar General store, there's lots of seasonal items. And I felt tempted. I felt really tempted to just peruse because it's cheap. And, you know, you just see what's there in the new season. But when I felt that temptation, I was like, okay, Lisa, this is an opportunity to, to take those thoughts captive, to to overcome that temptation and just simply walk to the checkout counter. And I did, and I felt great. And if you're on my email list, I'm going to email you the picture of of the markers when I'm sitting in my car and I felt proud of myself. And I just thought, wow, you did that. You walked into that store, got exactly what you wanted and walked out without looking at anything. Now I'm not saying looking at stuff is bad, but sometimes we have to retrain ourselves if we've had bad habits of overspending or over accumulating. Okay. So what will you gain by doing a spending freeze? Well, you're going to have a greater awareness of your spending habits. When we put a halt to things, or especially if you're a woman of faith and you have fasted from anything, you you have a greater sense of your habits around that thing that you have fasted from, whether it's social media, whether it's food, whether it is gossip, whether whatever it may be, you have a heightened awareness around that thing. So you're hyper-focused on that, that particular habit. And so you're going to have a greater awareness of your spending habits when you make this intention of doing a spending freeze. You're also going to become more creative. So if you're doing a spending freeze on your pantry items or your freezer items, you're going to get creative cooking with what you already have on hand. You're also going to gain a sense of accomplishment, like knowing that you did that, like you cleared everything out and you stuck to it and you can overcome this. It's, it's a really big accomplishment for yourself. You're also going to have a greater appreciation of the things that you do have. And you're actually going to use those items instead of just hoarding them or keeping them. You're actually going to put them to good use. You're also, when you do this, when you do a spending freeze, you're going to have more motivation to work on other goals as well. It's just the same with working out any kind of muscle, like your decluttering muscle. When you declutter a small area, you're going to feel more motivated to declutter another small area. So you are going to gain some motivation by doing this, and it's going to help you achieve other goals as well. And best of all, 
It's going to reduce your stress caused by overspending and having too much in your home. So it's all around a really good practice to put in place. So how do you, now that you're really excited about maybe doing a spending freeze, how do you get your family on board? (laughs) Well, I always tell you, don't be the Nazi mom. Don't be like, okay, I've decluttered my house. I've organized it. Now nobody move anything. Okay, that's not real life, okay? So don't be a Nazi mom when it comes to doing a spending freeze either. So have some grace with this, but like bring your family in and tell them, you know, if you want to share with them, tell them what your what your goals are and why you're doing this. And maybe this might be a you might choose to do a spending freeze that doesn't even involve them. They might not even notice. Like sometimes my kids will go to the pantry and they will say, when are you going to go grocery shopping? There is literally nothing in here to eat. Well, I promise you, there's plenty in there for you to eat. You just don't want to take the time to put it together. And so they don't even know that I'm on a spending freeze, but I simply tell them, well, you just have to find you know, stuff to eat because I'm not going to the grocery store until next Wednesday. And so you might be able to do a spending freeze without anybody even noticing. Okay. So I really recommend that you start small. Start with something that, like I said, nobody will notice and do it regularly. Make a spending freeze a regular occurrence in your home because you are not only helping yourself out now, you're also training your kids and setting an example for them into the future as well. All right, friends, I hope this, I hope you found this challenging and also motivating to do some kind of spending freeze for a specific reason in your home. Now, if you are someone who needs further assistance beyond this podcast in decluttering and systemizing your home, there are two options. You can dive into the accountability club in the month of May and then come back after summer, or you can work with me one-on-one by clicking the link below and scheduling a coaching consultation with me. All right. I will see you right here next time on the habits and home show. Hey friend, before you go, I wanted to tell you more about the Accountability Club. Each month, we'll tackle a new space in our homes and work together to declutter and set up systems so we can easily maintain order without getting overwhelmed. You'll get a new decluttering tutorial each month, the coaching and accountability you need to actually follow through, and encouragement without judgment from other Christian moms in a safe environment. And guess what? The entire club is off of social media, so you don't have to worry about distractions the world may throw at you. Sweet friend, if you're feeling stuck in your decluttering journey, this is the place for you. Click the link below to try out the Accountability Club and start decluttering today.